Hi there. So uh, I just finished listening to Coming Back Alive, which is a nonfiction about uh, a fishing crew that were they pushed it too far. Uh, well, the captain pushed it too far and uh, didn't turn back when they should have, and they ended up getting caught in this insane storm. Uh, hundred foot waves that they were caught in. It was devastating, and so it's a story of them trying to survive, trying to look out for each other, trying to make it until someone can come rescue them, as well as the rescue helicopter that has to navigate some impossible situations to hopefully help them get out. Sorry, there's a garbage truck collecting and I don't feel like stopping to film because it's cold outside and I want to I want to move on. So it's the fishing crew trying to survive. It's the fishing crew uh, trying to help each other and keep it together and and last for just one more minute and then one more minute more. The, the way this is formatted, it's a short, it's a short audiobook. I think it was like six hours total and yet it took me like a week <laughs> to listen to because I uh, wasn't really that interested in the beginning. It's not that I wasn't interested. It was well written and I don't really know what could have been done different to make it better it's just it's one of those books where you just kind of have to trust the process because it's a lot of ground laying it's a lot of kind of getting things getting the backstory and getting the many pieces into place in the first half of the book so in the first half I was just kind of like how's this gonna come together how's this really gonna end up being as satisfying as, how's it gonna be a satisfying narrative not story this is a true story of survival and rescue but narratively but it pulls it off the second half of the audiobook I didn't have access to the ebook um, the the second half of the audiobook I just laid in bed and stared at a wall until it was done because I didn't want to do anything else. I just wanted I just wanted to listen to how these people would survive. I wanted to know who was going to survive as people started dying one by one in this impossible, horrible situation. I wanted to know who was going to survive for the survivors. I wanted to see how they were going to cope with their survival and like you know the PTSD and the survivor's remorse and all of that was covered really well uh, after it was all done. It was just brilliant. It was a brilliant story. The, it's it's one of those stories where you kind of have to trust the process because the first half, I, I don't want to downplay it, like the first half wasn't terrible. It just didn't grip me um, and I happen to love survival stories and rescue stories. Um, this actually reminds me a lot of, let's see, this one's called Coming Back Alive. Let me Let me scroll my scroll my books because there's a couple of uh, stories similar to this that I could also recommend you if you too are into this really random thing that I like. Obviously The Wager was on my favorite books of the year list so obviously I loved that. Um, the let's see what was it called? It starts with an E. Endurance. Endurance was on last year's favorite books of the year list. Both of those are survival stories. Deadliest Sea was a really good one um, and I know Into the Abyss was pretty was it, that one was really good too if you're into this kind of very niche nonfiction, I don't know. But anyway, uh, I don't want to downplay the first half because it was, it, it, you know, it's a great story. It's well told. I just, um, I just needed to trust the process a little bit more, I think, because I, I was kind of in and out of it. But once we hit the second half and we just are in the thick of the survival and the rescue, absolutely brilliant. Loved this book. So uh, I am currently reading Speaking Bones. I would really love to finish it by the end of this week so that I can focus totally the rest of December on uh, working through Malazan, which won't be finished by the end of the year. It'll eep into January, but I'd like to get a, a chunk into it. I really want to restart it and then get a chunk into it because I took such a long break. And then my reread of Hitchhikers, just depending on if I'm in the mood for, you know, some good times or some hard times. <laughs> so I don't know if I can finish Speaking Bones by the end of this week, by the end of this vlog. And I'm not going to rush it because I love this book, but also these books do read really quickly when I give them my full focus. And Speaking Bones is the only thing on my agenda right now. So we'll see. We'll see. I'll, I'll let you know. I'll give you updates. Welcome to the vlog.
So I am a little bit over the halfway point of speaking bones. I don't know what I was thinking that I could possibly finish this book by the end of last week, especially when I'm, when I'm, this is a time where I'm reading less, <laughs> like during holiday break and everything, I'm reading less. So I don't know what I was on or how far into this book I thought I was. Anyway, I'm over the halfway point. So I love it. This is the conclusion to the Dandelion Dynasty, which I know that I have been talking about a lot lately. So sorry, but this is the conclusion. I can tell you if it sticks the landing. I can tell you that so far it's doing an extraordinary job. Books three and four were originally written as one book and the publisher uh, made Ken Liu split them up because, you know, there's a lot of pages in these books. So uh, it was unrealistic to bind a book that giant. So, but Ken didn't try to uh, split the, this is what I understand, Ken didn't try to split them as two cohesive separate books, instead he just split it down the middle and said these books are one book. So, this is the continuation of The Veiled Throne and feels like it, it feels like a like a through <laughs> continuation and it's phenomenal dealing with these two empires that are at war and the very conflicting moral motivations and decisions that are being made having to deal with the tragedy of of failures that are coming of roadblocks that are coming having to deal with the cost of war and 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 the true suffering that happens at war having to deal with characters who are fighting so hard and everything just doesn't always go their way but as well this world is so deep. This is such a living, breathing world with history, with stories and myths and legends and gods, and with traditions and cultures that are fighting for their lives or trying to meld together or losing their very identity, belief systems, and moral grounding that are not straightforward. And, and, and Ken Liu's writing, his prose is so gorgeous, so brilliant. There are so many lines that just strike on their own what they say in the middle of a scene, a line that just pierces through the pages straight to the reader, that demands the reader to pause and think about what's being said, about what's being explored. It's just, oh my goodness, it's it's such a culturally, um, just world building wise, world building wise, it's such a rich uh, series. It better be for 4,000 pages, but it's one of those books where it's one of those series where it's exploring so much, it's going so wide that it's just gonna take some time to get through it, but it's also so emotionally, it drags so much out of you emotionally and the characters are so complex and deep that they feel so real. Anyway, so there's a lot going on in this story. It's going really wide. I'm not naming any character names. I'm not talking about any specific plot points because we're so deep. There's so many pages behind me that in order to talk to you about it in a spoiler-free fashion, just I can't name anything specific. I can only talk about how extraordinary this world, this action, these characters, these emotions, the themes are. It's brilliant. It's a brilliantly written series and book four has continued continued on to book three and already made retrospectively book three better because book three and book four are supposed to be together. So naturally the story continuing is um, what it's supposed to be, I guess is how I can say that. So anyway, I will check in with you when I do finish this book. I'm at a point at the book where it's kind of hard to slow down. It's kind of hard to not be reading. So um, I will check in with you when I do finish it and give you my final thoughts on does it stick the landing? Is the quartet worth the tremendous page count? And um, yeah, all that jazz. Gosh. I really love this series. Well, I finished. 
and I'm not entirely sure what I'm supposed to do with my life now. I think I did make clear in previous clips that I've been reading this book for about a month or more now. Um, the first half of the book I just took my time with it and then it was the second half of the book that I finally flew through. I gave you that check-in right after I uh, gave it my full focus and then the rest of the book was pretty much unstoppable. So Speaking Bones <laughs> is the conclusion to the Dandelion Dynasty and it might be the most satisfying conclusion to a series that I've ever read. Again, I'm keeping this spoiler free, so I'm not going to tell you character names, I'm not going to tell you anything extremely detailed, I'm just going to let you know was it worth it? And the answer is a resounding yes. The there, There's one element to it that I think, uh, okay, I'll say this. this quartet is not written in the standard, typical fantasy or sci fantasy storytelling style uh, that we're accustomed to. So certain, um, it, it, it's, it's an epic in the truest form. It covers so much time and so much just so much. It follows generations of people. It follows the progression of this history and these people groups. So because of that, it doesn't span following, you know, person who goes through arc. It's not like that. It, it's so sprawling. But that also means that you kind of have to trust Liu with his unique storytelling style. It means sometimes we're going to talk about legends and myths and stories within the story. It means that sometimes we're going to go off on side tangents following something totally uniquely different. It means that sometimes battle sequences, though brilliantly written, will not follow the formatting that you might expect. <laughs> it's very much um, epic, incredible, bloody, tragic battles. Uh, pause! Here's an invention that is essential that you need to know about that's a big part of the battle, but let's talk about it being invented. And then cut back to the battle! Epic, sprawling, incredible, horrifying battle! pause, another invention. <laughs> so his storytelling style is unique, unique to him. But at least for me, there were times where I felt I found myself frustrated, for instance, in the battle sequence, um, or times where I was like, how does this matter? How does this random thing that we're spending so much time on matter? But I kept having to remind myself, just trust Liu's process, just trust his storytelling, because he's such a brilliant storyteller that I just have to let him tell a story in a way that's unfamiliar to me. And it paid off everything seemed like it mattered in the end. Everything felt intentional. Everything felt planned out. Everything felt like it had a satisfying conclusion. Every character felt like they had the conclusion that was right to them. Sometimes it was happy and beautiful. Sometimes it was tragic. Sometimes it was bittersweet. And the characters all got the ending that seemed fitting to them, at least from my perspective. It's so weird. I'm going to miss this story and I'm going to miss Dara so much, but I also feel so satisfied. I feel like I, I got a complete story, like it's done and I'm happy, but I miss it. It was so emotional. It was so intense. The, oh my goodness, the, the themes in the story are special sprawling, as sprawling as the story itself, but, um, you know, love, hope, friendship, betrayal, loyalty, the way things affect generations, um, the cost of power, the cost of war, so many things following so many people and all written so impactfully. This is, this is one of the greatest series. This series deserves the amount of love and attention that so many greats get. This is a true epic and it, and and it was so worth it. It was so worth reading. Not everything that Liu did was perfect to me. There were times where I do think I do think that the story absolutely could be condensed. There are times where the story feels meandering, but I also think that by the end, every single bit feels satisfying. So trust the process, I guess. 
I can totally see why this series wouldn't be perfect for everyone, but I do think that it needs to be tried by more people. If you enjoy an epic and if you won't be uh, detoured by a lot of pages, if you're willing to just take your time with it, wow, wow, <laughs> what a story. I loved it. I loved it so much. I, this is, this is a new favorite. How I would rank it in my favorite series list, I'm not quite sure, but it's up there. It's in the list. 100% it's in the list. I think I've gushed about every single one of these books as I've read them. I definitely have loved every one of them and been blown away by them. There will not be spoiler chats on them because I didn't take rigorous notes like you would need to for a story this sprawling, but I think probably in the future, not right now, in the future I'll do a reread of the series and then I will actually do that. This time I just let the story take me away and usually when I do spoiler chats on books, usually I just enjoy the story and then after the fact I look through um, the stuff that I've underlined and annotated and then just kind of build a review around that. This is not a series that I can do that for, this is a series where I have to be taking notes as I go and I didn't do that for this for this quartet so there will be spoiler chats someday in the future hopefully someday it'll get an adaptation which will put it on more people's radar and then we could do a read-along but if it doesn't happen I'll still do a reread eventually but I'm just gonna sit with it for now and it was amazing. I mentioned in a community post that I would be back to normal now, my upload schedule would be back to normal, but now this weekend we have family members that are gonna come and visit for the holidays, the post holidays, so I'm not gonna be able to film a review, uh, like a Saturday video, the spoiler chats. So I'm truly sorry. <laughs> This will be the last disruption. I try to keep my schedule uh, as cons and I know you don't care. I know you don't care. You're happy to just have uploads. I know that. But for me, it's important to me to keep my upload schedule consistent, but the holidays got in the way. It is what it is. Anyway, I loved this book so much. I loved this series so much. I hope you'll give it a go. Uh, this week I read Coming Back Alive, or rather these two weeks that I've been uh, that I've been reading. I read Coming Back Alive, which is a nonfiction. It was great, and Speaking Bones, which is a sci-fi fantasy. It was astounding. Highly recommend. I post videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and usually on Saturdays as well on this channel, Mondays and Fridays on the Manga Channel. I'll see you again soon. Bye.